hit that button, it didn't go through. That's what happened. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. It's Monday. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. You know, people, I believe in having the same energy. One thing for sure, two things for certain. We have kept the same energy since we started way back in March 2020. And uh, I believe people should always keep the same energy, whether it's negative or positive, but that's just me, you know? A lot of times people try to switch up, but hey, you know, it is what it is. Good morning. How's everyone feeling? Everyone all right? We fighting this COVID stuff, all this other stuff going on in the world. Break down Monday. Preach it on the Sunday, break it down on the Monday. Reach it on the Sunday. Break it down on the Monday. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Let's see. Wait, 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 wait. Now, just to think. This is what I try to share with you all. The whole Bible goes together. The entire Bible goes together. For it is said, it was written by man and inspired by God. Okay, now, we're going to go back in the 119th division of Psalms. 119 division of Psalm is the largest. It's the largest chapter. It, it's the law. It's the largest chapter in the in the whole Bible. 119 division of Psalm is the largest. Now it also deal with the Hebrew alphabets. Now it also deal with ways. It deal with statutes. It deal with law. It deal with ordinance. It deal with precepts. All of this stuff is in that 119 division of Psalm. I believe. I believe. Pastor Mike. I believe. Every believer should read Psalms 119. Everything you need to know is in Psalms 119. When it talks about law, it deals with teaching. That's all law is. Law is a bunch of teachings. Now, people be saying, keep the law. Okay, well, if you teach me the law, I make and keep the law. But can you teach me the law? So all the law is is a bunch of teachings. With Watch this, people. Somebody asked me a question. Y'all know I do my question first. This was the question. This is what the question. The question was, I don't know. I respect everybody's question. The question was, was Satan a fallen angel or was he the king of the earth? Was Satan a fallen angel or was he the king of the earth, right? That's what the question somebody opposed to me. That's the question they shot at me, right? Okay, now, I didn't, I answered that question without answering the question. Why? Because in the church, in the church, we've been taught that Lucifer was a fallen angel. That's what we've been taught, okay? The Bible says he the prince of the earth. I got that. The book of Revelation tells me he's a deceiver, he's a dragon, he's the devil, he's the accuser of the brethren, right? Okay, now, I go in 1 John, 1 John breaks it down about Satan. Now, did I answer his question? Yeah, I answered his question. 
He asked me, was Satan a, a fallen, uh, um, was Lucifer a fallen angel? Okay, well, where you get that from? Where you get it from? Because if I go in that 14th chapter of Isaiah, Isaiah was talking about Babylon. And as he was talking about the king of Babylon, he used Lucifer like a fallen angel. But yet he was talking about the king at Babylon. Okay, now, as far as him being the king of the earth, you call him what you want. According to the scriptures, he's a deceiver. According to the scriptures, he's the red dragon. According to the scriptures, he's Satan. According to the scriptures, he's an accuser of the brethren. I can show you that right there in the 12th chapter of Revelation. Now, watch this. If I take you in Isaiah, Isaiah let us know about the star, the light, okay? A lot of times we've been teaching about Lucifer, people. Sorry to tell y'all, they've been teaching us that bad. This is why I tell you, when you study the Bible, you have to know timing, you have to know culture, you have to know the mindset of the writer, and you have to know, watch this. The 119th division of Psalms give us all of that. This is why, this is why, 119, 18, he said, open my understanding. Open my understanding. God, I need to understand what is being said here. I need to know what's going on. So by him asking that question, he has opened up the whole week of study. Why? <clears throat> Excuse me, coming out of that 119. Yesterday we dealt with 105. For the Bible says, the Bible says, the word of God is a lamp to my feet, a light unto my path. I can, teach, I can take one through seven and teach that for a whole month. Why? Stay focused. Watch this. Watch this. The title, the title of the message was Shoeshine Boy. Shoeshine Boy. I'm riding, right? The song come on. But I'm already I'm like, God, what's going to be my message for tomorrow? So the song come on. Shoeshine Boy. God said, that's the message for tomorrow. I said, Shoeshine Boy, God? I said, what else that in the Bible? God showed to me what that's in the Bible. Look at what David is saying. Watch this. 105, 106, 107. 105, 106, 107. Psalms 119 is going to answer his question. It's going to answer all of our questions. We could go right there in Philippians. And what Paul said, Paul said, be careful for nothing. Paul said, don't worry about nothing. But everything, prayer, supplication with thanksgiving. Prayer, supplication with thanksgiving. This is what's happening in the 119 division of Psalms. The same thing Paul is saying. Every <clears throat> let's, let's 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 touch on the person. I don't know who it is. I mean, it just I don't you can't you know, I don't know who they are, but you know they they want to learn too. So we're gonna teach everybody. Watch this. According to Isaiah, right? That's why I don't do one verse. That one verse is a trip. According to Isaiah, right? The 14th chapter. How art thou fallen from heaven? Who are you talking to? Who are you talking to? O Lucifer, son of the morning. How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nation? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven, and I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregations in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. He was talking to the king. He was talking about Babylon. If you go all the way to the, to the very first verse in the 14th chapter, watch what it say. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the stranger should be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord of the servant and the handmaids. And they shall take them captive. Who's captive? They were and they shall rule over their oppressors. When he gets down, when he gets to verse 8, 3, all the way to 14, he's talking about the king in Babylon. 
So when he get to verse 14, he's talking and he's saying, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? But yet we stand in the church and we tell y'all that Lucifer was a fallen angel. This is not what Isaiah is saying. If I take, come here, John, come here, John, come here, John, come here, John. People, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to my people. Don't, 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 don't let nobody mess y'all up with this. Don't let nobody mess y'all up on the real. I use the King James Version. They say King James with this. I, I use the King James Version. All 66 books, okay? This brother might be from the... They have their own Bible. The Masons have their own Bible. He might be Jehovah Witness. Jehovah Witness have their own Bible. Catholic have their own Bible. Okay, well, I'm using the King James Version with 66 books. I know the Bible have more books in it. I know they took some Bible. I know they took some books. I know all of that. That don't change nothing. That don't change nothing. I use the King James Version, all 66 books. Now, you use the Mason, that's your book. I'm not talking to you. Jehovah Witness, that's your book. I'm not talking to you. I'm not talking to you. Hebrew, that's y'all. I'm not talking to y'all. I'm talking to Christian people. And I'm using King James Version. Okay? Now. If you won't listen, listen. You don't want to listen, don't listen. It's just that simple. Bible, be Bible. According to 1 John 3 chapter, John say, He that commits sin is the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. From the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. So all that Lucifer being a fault. Say, okay, so what that mean? On some real talk, what that mean? Because when I go to Revelation the 12, I'm coming back, John. When I go to Revelation the 12 chapter, according to Revelation the 12 chapter, I thought that verse 8. And prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. And the great and the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil, Satan, which is the deceiver of the world. He was cast out into the earth. So, what that was you asked me about? Lucifer being a fallen angel? What, what you saying? Because according to Revelation. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil. Satan, which is the, who deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth. And his angels was cast out with him. You want to talk? Go to Revelation all the way to Genesis. Well, just give me the one verse. That's why, this is why people, this is why I teach you all, as God give it to me, I give it to you. I already know they have their own book. I already know they have their own book. I already know, I ain't talking to them. I'm talking to us. Now, if they won't listen, they can listen. They don't want to listen, that's on them. Come in, come in, Psalms. Come in, Psalms. Come in, Psalms. If I have to say, you know, let nobody, let nobody mess y'all up. Let nobody mess y'all up. According to Psalms 119, you got Alpha, you got Beta, you got Gamma, you got Delet, you got Vol, you got Zane, you got Tet, you got Jod, you got Cheat, you got Cap, you got Mim, you got Lame, you got None, you got Ain, you got Zat. All of these are the 22 alphabets in the Hebrew language. In every one of the letters, he gave us eight verses for each letter. So when you read Psalms 119, Psalms 119 and 8, let's start with 17. Psalm 119 and 17 says, Deal bountifully with me, thy servant, that I may live and keep thy word. Come back on. Listen, people. The title of the message was Shoeshine Boy. A shoeshine boy is a servant. He was a servant. When Jesus took them disciples and he was washing their feet, he said, say, bro, y'all do for people what I'm doing for y'all. That wasn't no ceremony. 
That wasn't no ritual. That wasn't no law. That was just something to do from your heart. He was teaching them servitude. And, and, and Mary, in the 12th chapter, when she was anointing Jesus' feet, Judas got mad. But yet she was preparing him for his burial. She was the shoeshine girl. Where are the shoeshine boys and girls in the church? Where are the servants? We want to be served, but yet we're supposed to serve. We don't have enough of servants. So now, as Pastor Mike, I don't mind being your shoeshine boy. You know why? Because God said, Mike, get the dust off their feet. Revive their trust. You got to help them with their understanding. Why? Because a lot of people have lost faith. A lot of people no longer want to trust. A lot of people no longer believe. This is... Come here, Psalms 119. Listen to this. Listen to this. So I, I, I asked God. I said, I said, God, why that? He said, Mike, they need to be inspired. They need to be encouraged. Look what David said. Look what the psalmist said. Look what the psalmist said. Psalms 119, 105. The word is a lamp unto my feet. And a light unto my path. I have sworn and I will perform it. I will confirm, I will confirm it. That I will keep thy righteous judgment. Verse 107. I'm afflicted very much. I'm afflicted very much. Revive me, O Lord, according to thy word. Revive me, O Lord, according to thy word. God say, Mike, when somebody bring you some bent up, some bad looking, some dusty, some dirty shoes, as a shoe shine boy, you're going to revive them. And this is what David is saying. This is what the psalmist is saying. Revive me, O Lord. But look what he said. Thy word is a lamp. People, people, the word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. The word of God is a white light. The word of God is a red light. The word of God is a yellow light. The red of God is a green light. The red of God is a uh, yellow light, a uh, red, the word of God is all of those lights. There are going to come a time in your life when you're going to need that red light. You got to stop. All that no, just stop. But yet, but yet, we don't understand it like that. There are going to become times in your life when God's going to give you the green light. Go, go. He's going to give you a little yellow light. Watch, Mike, pay attention. Watch what's going on. Be cautious. What good is a lamp? without the bug what good is you knowing God without his word he said a lamp to my feet and a light into my path he will even be a blue light a blue light will cause you to see some things oh my God you ever heard of it but put it under the blue light and this is what the word of God this is how powerful the word of God is is and this is what the psalmist is saying the word of god not no jibber jibber jabber not nobody making all that noise not nobody running around here faking not none of that but before psalms 119 right watch this verse 18 except i beseech thee the free will offering of my mouth the free will offering of my mouth. Oh Lord, and teach me, and teach me, and teach me thy judgments. My soul is continually in my hand, yet do I not forget thy law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I err not from thy precepts. All of this stuff, people. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I err not from thy precepts. 
Thy testimonies have I taken as a heritage forever. For there are the rejoice, there are the rejoicings of my heart. I have inclined my heart to perform thy stature always, even unto the end. Why? Because the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The song says, Shoe shine boy, you work so hard. You do the work so well. Where would you be in the next 10 years? Don't stop. Don't give up. I don't know what I was saying to God. For the Bible said we don't know how to pray as we ought to. I don't know what I was saying to God. But what God was saying to me, mate, you've been doing what I told you to do. Don't stop. Keep going. It's a lot more to learn. There is a lot more to discover. People. Stop focusing on what's going on in the world and focus on your relationship with God. Stop focusing on what's going on in the world and focus on your relationship with God. I'm going back in the days. They had boots. So if you set up there to get your shoes shined, I'm shining your shoes. I don't have time to worry about what they're doing over there. I don't have time to worry about what they're doing over there. My focus is here. My focus is doing the work for you. This is what this is about. But we done lost focus on the work. This is what. Come here, Paul. Come here, Paul. I'm, I'm, I'm coming back. I'm coming back, Stone. It's just, it's just so much. We're going to break it down. This is where we went with it. This is where we went with it. Come here, Paul. According to Paul, writings to the Philippians, I'm going to go back to verse 5. In verse 5 he says, let your moderation be known unto all men. This, the, let your moderation be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. The Lord is at hand. Verse 6, be careful for nothing. Be careful for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Be careful for nothing. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God with everything. Prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving. Pray, ask, thank him. Pray, ask, thank him. Come back and come back and come back in Proverbs 119. Come back in Proverbs. Come here, come here, Psalm 119. I'm sorry. Psalm 119, watch this. According to Psalm 119, verse 18, Open thou my eyes, that I may behold the wondrous things out of the law. Out of the law. People. These people over here. Y'all got to keep the law. Keep the law. What is the law? What is the law? Because before the week out And we finish with 119 Psalms 119 All that jibby jibby jab About you keeping the law Open thou my eyes That I may behold wondrous things Out of the law What you saying Psalms Man all I'm saying man Give me some understanding of what's going on Okay So how could you have understanding of what's going on Pertaining to the law If nobody don't teach it to you but yeah, you're going to tell me you got to keep the law. Well, how about teaching it to me first? Because that's all the law was about. Teaching. I'll wait for him. I'll wait. Come here, Jesus. Come here, Mary. According to John, the 13th chapter, and I'm going to go to the 12th chapter. I don't mind being a shoeshine boy. I've been doing that for the last, what, 18 months, year and a half. It's about your faith. It's about your trust. It's about your belief. It's about your understanding. It's about precepts. It's about testimonies. It's about ordinance, it's about law, it's about this, it's about all of that. 
But if you don't help me to get right, how I'm going to be right? So every day God give it to me, I give it to y'all. Pastor Mike, you pray for my son? All right. Pastor Mike, you pray for my daughter? Pastor Mike, you pray for my aunt? Pastor Mike, Pastor Mike, Pastor Mike. Cool, let's go. Let's go. This, this, I love this here. Why? I'm the I'm that shoe shine boy. Bring your shoes. Bring your shoes. We're going to get right. We're going to get right. And when we walk, we're going to step to hell with the devil and all his workers. That's how we coming. That's how we coming. Why? Because I'm going to take you in that six chapter of, 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 of uh, Ephesus and show you. Paul said, I'm coming back. I'm coming back, John. I'm coming back, John. It's all the Bible. I don't, According to the sixth chapter of Ephesians, and I'll read 14 and 15. Verse 14 says, Stand therefore having your loins girded with the truth, and having your breastplate of righteousness. Okay, I got the breastplate. I got my lines girded. It's good. Okay. Verse 15. And your feet, and your feet, and your feet shod with the preparation, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. What is the preparation of the gospel of peace? You got on the breastplate. You got your sword. You got your gird line, your lines girded. You have all of that. You have your helmet of salvation. But what about what's on your feet? What about having your feet right? Because if your feet is not right, you can't advance. If your feet not right, you can't advance. And this is what Paul is saying. The preparation of the gospel. Of peace. Of peace. All that, but I don't care about what's going on in the world. It's not my concern. The world is not my concern. Though we in the world, we're not of the world, people. That's not our concern. We're going to be who we are. Sons and daughters of God. Doing what God tell us to do. You know, you, you know what messed me up with church folks? Church folks really don't know the difference. Watch this, people. You got all of those people doing whatever they want to do, right? Then you have us. And then you compare us with them. How? How? Our judgment is not their judgment. They are doing what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to lie. They're supposed to steal. They're supposed to kill. They're supposed to do all that stuff they're doing. Because they're in the world. Jesus said, Jesus said, in the end times, as to come, you're going to have many false prophets. So now, if they're over that line, we can't get mad with them. They're doing what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to tell lies. They're supposed to be fake. They're supposed to do everything they're doing because Jesus told us they would do that. So who are we? That's not our concern. What the... But man, the mic say, bro, whatever they doing over there, that's their business. However they doing it over there, that's their business. Why? They're supposed to do that. The world, the world is supposed to do just what the world doing. Lying, stealing, cheating, corruption. That's the world. That's the world. But as children of God, it's not our concern. Why would we concern ourselves with what the world doing? For what? What can we do about it? And your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The gospel of peace. The gospel of peace. So therefore, your shoes gonna help you to advance. No, ma no matter how high the water come, you got the right shoes on. No matter how far you come, you have the right shoes on. Keep going. No matter how cold it get, you have the right shoes on. Keep going. You have what you need, so what's the problem? This is what happened to the children of Israel during the time of the wilderness. It was about them advancing. It was... Come here, come, come here, come, come here, come, come here, come here, um... 
Numbers, I, want to, I need you for one minute, Numbers. Come here, come in, Numbers. Watch this, people. Watch this, watch this, watch this. According to Numbers 13, and I'm going to read verse 26. And they went and came to Moses and, and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran of Kadesh and brought back word and brought back word. What did the psalmist say? The word of God is a lamp. The word of God is a lamp and the word of God is light. Watch this. And they brought back word unto them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. The fruit of the land. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. Peep gang. Moses, you sent 12 people, right? To spout the land, right? Okay. So they go in the land. They don't just go in the land. They come back with some fruit out of that land. Which was, was during a certain season of the grapes and the grapes was right. So they brought the fruit out of the land. But is that the promised land? Is that the land flowing with milk and honey? No. It was a land that they had to take over on their way to what? The promised land. This is why when we get further in the study, we see once again, his two sons didn't want to go further. This is why God said y'all going to spend 40 years in the wilderness till y'all get all that foolishness out of y'all. So now they come back with word and they come back with the fruit. This is the evidence. Okay, every day, every day, when you receive the word of God, where's the fruit? Every time you hear the word, where's the fruit? For they came back with word and they had the fruit out of the land. But only Caleb and Jacob said we can, Joshua said we can take these people. Only Caleb and Joshua said we can take these people. See the mother ten? See the mother ten? See the mother ten? That's why he said let the dead bury the dead. See the mother ten? That's why he said let the blind lead the blind. See them other ten? Oh, we, we can't do nothing with these people. It's too many of them. It's this, is that. Where's your faith? That's where the shoe shine boy come in there. Where's your trust? Where's your belief? Every day, every day, every day, inspire and courage. Every day, inspire and courage. Every day, inspire and courage and teach you. Come on, God got us. God got us, people. We ain't worried about, we ain't worried about what's going on in the world. God got us. Why? According to what's written in his book, he ain't going to let nothing happen to us. That's what's written in Psalms 119. My child's sick. Okay. The Bible said the effectual and fervent prayers of the righteous avail it much. Prayer of faith. They sit. Okay, well, let's get together. Prayer of faith. They're going to be all right. Don't let that distract you. That's why I tell y'all, people come on here about them. I'm, say, man, the hell with them people. I don't care about them people. I care about our souls. They're supposed to run their mouth. They're supposed to talk jail. Because guess what? If you doing was when you doing was right, people gonna talk. People they're supposed to talk. But guess what? Show it to me in this book. That's what I say. Tall and running their mouth. Tell them show it to me in the book. People, this world, what we call a world, is gonna get worse. And worse and worse and worse but as sons and daughters of God can somebody please somebody all y'all that's listening all y'all that ill hustling show me in the Bible show me please in the Bible where we are the church show it to me Show it to me. I'm going to wait. Please send me the scripture where it says we the church. So now, now, because we've been taught that foolishness. So the first thing we say, wherever we go, we the church. Yeah. Yeah. 
according to the scriptures, wherever the word of God is, and there are believers, according to the structure of the church, according to the 11th, I'm going to show you where I get mine from. Show me where you get yours from. Show me where you get your foolishness from. Nowhere. Bunch of jibby jibby jab. That's why they got why they could come at you with that stuff about Lucifer being a fallen angel. That's why they could come at you with all that being the king of the earth. That's why they could come at you. Why? Because they studying. Christian folks don't study. We just come with a bunch of noise. This is why every day in the journey I'm arguing with these dudes because they go and search and they go and study. So now nowadays, y'all Googling. So when you run out there, man, you get that from Google. Let's let's deal with the book. Paul say, study to show thy self-approval. He didn't say, Google. Come here, Acts. I'm coming back, Psalms. I'm, I'm, I'm coming back, Numbers. On their way to the promised land, they were taking over land. Why? God told Joshua, everywhere your feet tread, everywhere your feet tread, I've given it to you. The Bible said, we walk, we walk, we walk, we walk, not run. We walk, we walk, we walk by faith, not by sight. This is why we have the lamp and the light. This is why we have the lamp and the light, because the world is darkness. This is why the Bible says we are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. The world is full of darkness, and without the light of God, you're going to walk and fall in every hole it is. But when you have the word of God being your Pat, he got you. So if it's time for you to use the red light, stop. He give you the green light, go. He give you a yellow light, be caution. He give you a blue light, look what's going on. Look at what's going on. You got the white light, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. This is what the shoe shine boy. He said, shoe shine boy, you work so well. Don't stop moving and don't give up. Even when you become rich, don't forget where you come from. We get in the church. Joker started out in his house. Now he done took all y'all money. Now he in the church and he don't even want to talk to you. What part of the game that is? You done forgot where you came from? That's just like the church of Ephesus that left their first love. Jesus said, what part of the game this is? Y'all wasn't like that when y'all just had three, four members. Everything was Jesus. Everything was the Lord. Now y'all up to a thousand members. Now y'all got all these programs and y'all marching in church and y'all hollering. Where, 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 where did foolishness come from? Y'all ain't started out with this foolishness. So now y'all done got besides y'all self and you sitting up there like you going? Say, bro, you ain't going. You done forgot where you came from, pastor. How we get here, going? I turn it, okay. But well, I said it, so I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna read it. You, you turn again? Man, why you be turning the book all in my face? Well, go, go, go back. Okay, watch this. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And blessed are they which do hunger after thirst. Hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Why? You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. What you hiding for? What you hiding for? Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and then give it light unto all that are in the house. God is the light. Oh, Lord, no, tell you, boy, just tell me. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Shoe shining up. I'm done. Dude, turn, dude, turn the book for y'all. Dude, just teaching y'all all in your face. And you still tripping. <sighs> the more y'all want, Pete. The more you want. I'm just a shoe shine boy. I don't mind being a shoe shine boy. I've been shining shoe for a whole year and a half. We're gonna get there, babe. We're gonna be all right. I don't bite my tongue. For what? Why should I bite my tongue? God didn't call us to bite our tongue, and He definitely didn't call us to kiss ass. He said, trust Him. So, what I look like kissing your ass? when I'm trusting God. But we done got too faith. 
Brother, somebody said, the same dude, well, do you listen? I listen to whatever I want. It's music. Music is a universal language. So who told you I can't listen to that? If, if, if I won't listen to NWA, I'm going to listen to them. If I won't listen to Charlie Wilson, I'm going to listen to him. If I won't listen to the OJs, I'm going to listen to them. If I won't listen to Kurt Franklin, I'm going to listen to him. So fake. So fake. Church folks so fake. Well, yet we're going to run the Romans. 10 and 9, 8. Well, if you confess with your mouth, what you been confessing? What you been confessing? What you stood in front of that church and confessed? Do you know what you confessed? Nothing. Nothing. But Father Mike, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart. Okay. You only was confessing to the righteousness of God. You was only believing in the death, the burial, and the resurrection for what he said. Did he raise him from the dead? You believe that? Okay. But if I take you in that first Corinthians, the 15th chapter, it was the vain faith that didn't believe. But that's not what saved them. For the scripture says this was saved unto righteousness. But continue to read. Paul is breaking it down in that 10th chapter about trying to get you to where you need to be. You're not there. But before you got 10, you got 8. And what you had the understanding about what Adam did. And now that you have the understanding, you have to go all the way back. So now, how you going to give me one verse? How you going to just tell me two verses going to save me? I ain't save near one of us. Confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart will not save you. Because Paul got that from Moses when Moses wrote that in Deuteronomy. So how that's going to save you? How that's going to be the Roman road to salvation? Say, brother, see how these people done pledge y'all in these churches? You know why I said that? I once was a minister before I came to pastor. And I done watched them tell them many people that same foolishness. They even tried to tell it to me. Well, see, Mike, when you, you got them, you got to get them, the, you got to lead them. The Roman road to salvation. How the hell that's a Roman road? What's so good about Rome? What's so good about Rome? Other than the law. Because the book of Romans deal with the law. The book of Romans deals with teaching. This is why Paul stood in that seventh chapter and gave us his testimony. What was your testimony, Paul? Mike, man, every time I went to do good, evil was always present. Man, what was your testimony, Paul? Mike, that what I wanted to do? That what I wanted to do? Man, I couldn't do it. But that what I didn't want to do? I always find myself doing it. The whole seventh chapter, Paul is testifying. Who going to deliver me from this wretched man that I am? So when he get in the eighth chapter, now he's breaking it down. He letting us know we're not responsible for what Adam did. So now when he get in the tenth chapter, he letting them know, say, but y'all still hard-headed. But let me tell y'all something. If you just could confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, that'll put you on the road to getting this thing together. That's not no road to no salvation. Why? Because he still come back and he say, how can you believe in whom you have not heard? How can you hear unless you have a prayer? Preacher. How can he preach except he be sent? Man, we so fake. So fake. But, 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 but. It's easy for me to just grab that book and say what the Bible says. And Lucifer was like before. Okay, what that's really about? Isaiah, mine. I'm telling, I'm talking to the king of Babylon. Why? Because they're in captivity. I'm letting them know. Say, but God's going to deal with you. Well, Paul said he was the chief sinner. Paul wasn't no chief sinner. This dude, the chief sinner, Mike. Go in 1 John. 1 John, go in that third chapter. Then he's going to let you know about it in the beginning. Go in 1 John, the fifth chapter. He's going to let you know about it some more. Then if you come out of 1 John, go right there in 2 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. Bible, baby. It's all Bible. And so fake in these churches. We've been so fake. God stand right here. He turned the pages. It's no way in the world, people. No man on earth could do what God has done in these 18 months. No man. No man. I'm talking man ain't missed not one day. Haven't missed not one day. And have been on every platform there is. And all I ever said was, if I'm lying, come show me. If I'm lying, come show me. And not, not Periscope and it's gone. YouTube, no. Facebook, no. TikTok, no. 
Instagram? No, I'm just one man. I'm just one man. But the Bible said, if it's just you and God, people, if it's just you and God, y'all are the majority. You are the majority if it's just you and God. So what I look like? Well, come on, I don't know. I'm going to call him for, for what? I don't need him. I can use him. But I'm going to call her for, for what? I don't need him. I can use him. I don't need him. You don't need nobody but God. You don't need nobody but God. And this is what's going on in the 19th chapter. God, open my understanding. God, teach me your ways. God, give me your statutes. God, put me on top of the law. God, help me with all this stuff right there in 119 division of Psalm. If you ever get that Psalm, you're going to be on top of game. So this is why every day I'm just going to shine your shoes. Every day I'm going to shine your shoes. Every day I'm going to put you on top of game. Every day, every day, every day. You give me something good. You don't, you don't. I'm still, that's my job to shine your shoes. I'm going to shine your shoes and I'm gonna treat you just as bad as I'm gonna treat them. I'm gonna treat everybody the same. Nobody better than nobody. Why? But I'm doing God's word. I'm doing God's word. And guess what? Look at all the lives. Look at all the people that have given their life to God. Look at all the people that then got on the right track. Look at all the people that being blessed. I'm in the bag y'all. I'm in the mag y'all with t-shirt and shorts on. And we'll walk that joker with that robe on, making all that noise. Got all them books from it, don't know nothing. Don't know nothing about that book. Say, fun, you think we gon' you thought God was gonna keep letting this go like this? Did you really think God was gonna keep letting this joker play y'all like that? Come on, man. Come on, man. I watch the news people. These people are airplane. Ain't them no little airplane. This was a a, a military airplane. Going down the runway to take off. Going down the runway to take off. These people don't care about living because of the conditions in which they're having to live in. So these people grab, these people trying to hold on a tr on an airplane that's about to take off in the air. And when the plane started taking off in the air, they had people falling off. They had people falling off. Why? Because Jesus said, you will have wars and rumors of wars. People, don't focus on that vaccine. That's just a distraction. If anything, that vaccine about money. A bunch of people got together and came up with this stuff, and they put a lot of money, and it's just like the dope man. Say, bro, you got my dope? I want my money. You got my vaccines? I want my money. So you need to make sure all these people get these vaccines because we want our, when we sit at the table, this is what we agreed about, right? Okay, so it ain't my problem that you can't get them to take it. That's your problem. You deal with that. Y'all ain't nothing to do it with. Tell us when should these things be and what should be the signs of thy coming and the ending of the world. In the end of the world, in the end of the world, Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I'm Christ, and shall deceive many. White horse. That's the white horse. In the sixth chapter of Revelation, that's the white horse. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled. See that you be not troubled. So now we won't go back in 2021 and do what we did in, 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 in 1990. And go over there and help those people. Wars and rumors of wars. People, it's going to get worse and worse. Pay attention to what's in this book. I'm not worrying about what they're talking about in the temple. They got their own Bible. I'm not worrying about the Jehovah Witness. They got their own Bible. I'm not even worrying about the people. They got their own Bible. I'm talking about this book right here. And now one of them can dispute. What is happening in the world today was written in this book. None of them, none of them, not one of them can dispute what's written in this book about what's happening today. 
And this was written thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago. Now what? Now what? Now what? While you're running your mouth, while you're talking about Jesus, this and that, now what? Matthew 8 and 28. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence. And he laid hand on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owe me. Break it down. Boy, that's a good one. That's a good one, God. Boy, that's a boy, that's a good one. Watch this. Watch this. And his fellow servant fell at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. But watch this. If I turn back, somebody had forgiven him of his debt. But then he ran into somebody that owed him. And look how he treated them. But the dude didn't treat him like that. Watch this. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry. And they came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O wicked servant, O wicked servant, Oh, 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 wicked shoe shine. You was a wicked shoe shine boy. Oh, wicked shoe shine boy. I forgave thee all that debt because thou desired me. Because you asked me. Should not thou also have compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? Dude said, say, bro, I forget you owed, didn't you owe me? And you asked me to forgive you? For what you owed me? So I said, all right, go ahead, baby. We good. I ain't even tripping on that. But then you had somebody that owed you. I didn't treat you like that. So why are you treating them like that? So all God saying. That's all God saying. He said, bro, I don't treat you like that. So why are you treating them people like that? Why are you treating them people like that? God going to deal with these jokers. But Jesus said Many will come in my name and deceive many. This is what the fruit is about, people. When Moses sent them in that land and they came back with the fruit, it's the fruit, baby. It's right down there. It's good. Some good things going on over there. Same thing in our lives. Where's the fruit? Where's the fruit, baby? You will know a tree. By its fruit. I had I had somebody tell me. They said, Pastor Mike, I heard a pastor say, and I don't like that hearsay stuff, because in the court of law, hearsay don't work. That don't go right. But I, I like to use it in teaching. But he said, they said, they said, the pastor said, look at the fruit. That shows his word is going forth because of the people he had. That's his fruit. I say, really? Really? You all are not no fruit. You bear fruit. How you gonna be fruit if you bear fruit? You bear the fruit. I water, you plant. You water, I plant. God gives it the increase. Nothing can grow unless God calls it to grow. Nothing. I can stand in the pulpit all I want and tell you all kind of lies out of this book. God gonna deal with me. God gonna deal with me. Just like the wicked servant. Everybody that's coming from this book don't mean you good. You might as well get that in your head. And you may as well get understanding of that. It's not that what he was saying in that hundred and division of song after he let us know about the light, after he let us know about the lamp, and after he let us know how he was he was just distressed. He said, the enemy set a snare. The enemy have set a snare. But God, because of your work, 
Zachariah, what you talking about? Be good? Zechariah 13, I'm going to start at 14, I mean 4. Zechariah 13 and 4 says, And it shall come to pass in that day that the prophet shall be ashamed every one of his vision. And when he has prophesied, neither shall they wear a rough garment to deceit. Say, bro, you're going to stop all that. Neither shall they wear a rough garment to deceive. But he shall say, I'm no prophet. I'm a husband man. For man taught me to keep cattle from my youth. And one shall say unto him, What are these wounds in thy hand? Then he shall answer, Those which were I, those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. Because the enemy always trying to set a snare for you. But too many of us, we've been allowing people to deceive us. Because who we think they are. But the Bible say, as they think in their heart, watch them. Because that's who they really are. They're going to tell you, eat and drink. And then when you eat and drink, you're going to get sick. And you're going to vomit it up. But we give y'all half of the verse. As a man thinking, so is he. If you think you're rich, you're going to be rich. If you think you're saved, you're going to be saved. If you think you're a business owner, you're going to be a business owner. And you die thinking. Because they don't have nothing to do with that. As a man thinking his heart. If he think wicked, he's going to treat you wicked. That's why the Bible says, the verse before that, he said, come eat and drink. The Bible say, don't go with him. The Bible say, don't do what he say. Because as a man thinking in his heart, so is he. In his heart, he wicked. He can't hide his wickedness. What comes out the mouth, come out the heart. It comes out the heart. The pain the hurry, the bitterness, the letdown, the upsets, all of that, as well as the good, it come out of the heart. James say, only what's in you gonna come out of you. Only what's in you gonna come out of you. If it's not in you, it can't come out of you. Say God, baby, <laughs> my dude, our relationship, big. I wouldn't change it for nothing in the world. <laughs> I wouldn't change it for nothing in the world. Don't tell me, man. You better back up off me. The wicked have laid a snare for me. Yet, 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 I strayed not from thy precepts. The wicked have laid a snare for me, but I've strayed not from thy precepts. Thy testimony have I taken as a heritage, as an inheritance forever. For they are the rejoicing of my heart. God, I know what you did for me, babe. I know where you brought me from. I'm not going to forget where, you, where I come from. You know what church folks say? Don't let nobody bring up your past. So what you bring up my past? <laughs> what good is to <the> you? <laughs> Nothing. You can't hurt me with my past. Because you're probably just as worse as mine. That's why the Bible says, judge not that you be not judged. But y'all got to learn to put your... No, I'm not putting my past behind. I did that. I thank God for that. Because it taught me to be the man that I am right now today. So I'm able, as I'm walking, as my, I'm being guided by the light of God. When I see that green light, okay, keep moving, Mike. When I see that red light, stop. When I see that yellow light, might be caution. Got snakes around. You got snakes around. You got to be caution. Mike, I'm going to give you the blue light so you can see right through them. This is why it is said, open my understanding. This is the spirit of God. And the spirit of God going to always put you on top of all game. Man, we've been so fake, man. We've been so fake. We've been so fake. The light of the word of God is a lamp. Not pastor, not pastor. The word of God is the lamp and it's the light. And you need it 
How you gonna walk in darkness? The world is darkness. The world and God is enemies. Enemies. So as you walk in through this dark world, you need the lamp and you need the light. You need the word of God. That's the only thing going to keep you. That's the only thing that's going to sustain you. No matter how much an enemy try to set a trap for you, boom, he ain't going to be able to do nothing with you. He won't be able to do nothing with you. People, for all of us that's dealing with something, for all of us that's going through, read that Psalms 119. We're going to work it. We're going to work ways. We're going to work faithfulness. We're going to work law. All of that. During this week, we're going to work that 119 division of Psalm as God turn the pages and wherever he go and watch all of it tie together. Whatever you're dealing with, believe you me, people, read Psalms. Read it. Go read it. Read Psalms 119 and watch. Watch what God begin to do in your life. Watch what God begin to do in your life. You know how many lives, you know how many lives the shoe shine boy saved? I'm saying boy, but it was men. It was men, but I'm saying shoe shine boy, because that's how the song goes. You know how many men then sat in the shoe shine parlor and told their deepest secrets to the shoe shine man? If I trust you with my shoes, I could trust you with my secrets. Because my shoes are everything. You know how many policemen back then used to take their police boots to the shoe shine parlor and told the shoe shine man what was going on because that was his friend. He took care of something he had. This is why I Je Come here, come, come, come here, Jesus. Come here, Jesus. Come here, come here, Jesus. This is why Jesus said. In the 13th chapter of John, watch this. Come here, John. Watch this. John 13 and 12 says, So after he had washed their feet, so after he had washed their feet, he didn't wash Jesus' feet, Jesus washed their feet. Jesus, the shoe shine boy. After he had washed their feet and had taken his garments, and was set down again, he said unto them, Know you, know you, know, know you what I have done to you? Do y'all know what I've done to y'all? Jesus said, Y'all know what I've done to y'all? Watch this, watch this. You call me master and Lord. And you say, Well, because I am the master, I'm Lord. You say, Well, for so am I, so am I. So am I, verse 14, and if I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, if I'm your Lord and Master and have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. This is not a ritual. This is not a tradition. It's just something Jesus was teaching them. That's it. That's it. I'm not about to be talking about y'all coming to church. We're going to get all these men. We're going to wash their feet. Nah, nah, nah. We ain't about to do all that. We ain't about to do that. There wasn't no ritual. There wasn't no ceremony. There wasn't nothing you have to do. He was teaching them something. Watch this. For, for I have given you an example. That's all it was. That's all it was. I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you. The servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that sent greater than he that sent him. Jesus said, said, bro, I'm not greater than God. God sent me. He sent me to do a work. I'm not greater than God. God sent me to do a work. I'm not greater than you. i just been sent to do the work. Verse 17, if you know these things, happy are you if you do them. I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen. But Jesus, 
Hold up, Jesus. You're talking to your 12, right? You talk, you're talking to your 12, right? And you say, you taught them, and you gave them an example of washing feet, right? But now you get right here in the 18th verse, you say, not, not, not all of y'all. I know who I chose. What, what the fuck's going on, Jesus? What's happening with that? Mike, see that little joke of Judas? I know he low down. I know he ain't no good. I didn't choose him. He just one of the people that have to do what he's supposed to do because that's what the world does. I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen, but that scripture may be fulfilled. Huh? Mike, Mike, God can't lie. Scripture's gotta be fulfilled. So, 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 so you mean to tell me, Jesus, the only way Jesus, Judas rolled with you so scriptures could be, yeah. Didn't Isaiah prophesy that? Didn't, didn't Jeremiah talk about that? that? So the scriptures have to be fulfilled. So all Judas is doing is fulfilling the scriptures. That's all? You mean to tell me, Jesus, that's all Judas? Mike, what I say? <laughs> Bible, bitch. I speak not of you all, I know whom I have chosen, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled, he that has eaten bread with me, lift up his heels against me. So you mean to tell me, in Genesis 3 and 15, right? The one that sent you, Jesus. The one that sent you, right? He talking to the serpent, right? And he tell the serpent, it shall bruise, you shall bruise his heels. And he shall bruise your head. Remember that, Jesus? In the beginning, all the way in Genesis, God told the serpent that the serpent was going to bruise your heel, but you was going to bruise his head. That the scriptures may be fulfilled, he that has, he that, he that eat bread with me. Let's read it. We don't want him saying, Pastor Mike, have his glasses on. He that eat bread with me, lift up his heels against me. Now I tell you before it come, that when it is come to pass, you may believe that I'm he. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receive whomsoever I send, receive me. And he that received me, receive him that sent me. Can you read? Judas going to eat the bread. Judas is the one. For the Bible said, then boom. The, let's read. Let's read. Let's read. Let's read. Right, watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Let's keep reading. Let's sit right here in the 13th chapter. Let's show you something. Let's keep reading. Verse 25. Now let's go back to 24 because I like Peter a little dirty self. Peter was a good little dirty joke. That was my partner, Peter. Verse 24. Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him that he should ask it should be of whom he spake. So now they're sitting around at the table. They ain't done wash their feet. Now they're sitting around the table. So Peter said, he hitting John. Say, John, bro. Ask him what you talking about. Say, say, John, bro. Tell him. Tell him what we talking about. He that eat bread. Say, bro, we've been rolling for a minute, all of us. He said he that eat bread. Watch this. Watch this. Psalms 119. The word of God is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Verse 25. He then lying, he then lying on Jesus' breast said unto him, Lord, who is thee? John was the youngest of them. John got his head on Jesus' chest. That's his breast on his chest. So John, being so young in the game, John asked Jesus, say, Jesus, who are you talking about, Bill? Who are you talking about? Why? Peter laid a hand to John. Say, to John, say, bro, ask him, who are you talking about? Watch this. Jesus answered, he is he. To whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. 
And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas as a chirate, the son of Simon. And after that, the sop, 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 Satan entered into him. See how that one question that the brother asked me gonna open up the whole lesson? For he asked me, was Lucifer a fallen angel? We're gonna work that, we're gonna work that 14 chapter of Isaiah. We ain't gonna leave it out. We're gonna work that 12 chapter of, of, of Revelation. We ain't gonna leave it out. We're gonna work that 11 chapter of 2 Corinthians. We ain't gonna leave it out. We're gonna work 1 John 3, 5. We're gonna work these, we're gonna work, we're gonna work them. Because it all go together to answer that one question. He just don't know what he did. He didn't open up the whole Bible. Verse 27. And after the sop. What sop, Mike? He is he whom I hear, who I will give a sop when he have dipped it. So you saying, Jesus, you took the bread, you dipped it, right? Then you gave him something to eat, right? Judas, right? And right after that, Satan got into him. But you had already told them that he was going to lift up his heels, right? But when I go in Genesis, he told that serpent, you're going to bruise his heels, he's going to tear your head up. Come here, baby. Come here. All that other stuff they be talking about, miss me. <laughs> ain't got nothing to do with me. Y'all, y'all study that. Y'all believe that foolishness. I ain't getting into that. Getting your feelings all you want. Don't get in your feelings. Get in your Bible. We got to get right, people. This thing ends the end. Revelation Genesis three and fourteen says, and the Lord said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and the dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Verse 15, and I will put intimate between thee, and I will put intimate between thee and the woman, and I will put intimate between thee and the woman, and I will put enemy between you and that woman, and between your seed and her seed, your seed and her seed. He asked the question, will Lucifer a fallen angel? Hold that thought. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shall bruise his heel. And thou shall bruise his heel. It. What's it? What is it? Go. What the world is an it? Mike, if I go in John, no, 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 that's not John. If I go in Luke for the guy Simeon, who was waiting on the Messiah, the guy who was waiting on the Savior, he couldn't die until he seen it. Why? Because God said it. It. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shall bruise his heel. You gonna bruise his heel. But see Jesus, Jesus gonna bruise your head. <laughs> He gonna tear your kingdom down. He gonna tear your kingdom down. This is what open up the whole book, people. This is why in the 13th chapter of Revelation, he's trying to come into power. This is why in the 19th chapter of Revelation, he come back and tear him down. This is why in the first Thessalonians, the church, y'all ready? Okay, I got y'all. Everybody here? Y'all straight. Y'all straight. So when it's time to come back, he coming back with the church. What's the church, Mike? What the church is? The mercy and the grace of God. The seventh dispensation of God. This is why Ephesians say he have dealt all of us the measure of grace. So all that old foolishness we've been running around in the church and all that? No, baby. No. No. God going to call up his grace. When he call up his grace, 
He going to send back with Jesus his grace and wreck this place. And wreck this place. This is why the Bible says that he cannot. Who? Who? This one. This one. In, the, in, in, that, third, in that third chapter, that 15th verse. He cannot be revealed. As long as the church is here. This is why back in the 119 division of Psalm, the psalmist said the word of God, the word of God is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. People, see the stuff that's happening in today's time? It's a distraction. You got nothing to do with no antichrist. None of that. None of that. If that's what he won't teach his people, let him. If that's what she won't teach her people, let them. According to this book, from Revelation all the way to Genesis, all the way to Genesis, Satan. I love it. I do this all day. Shoe shine boy. Do the work so well. Do the work so well. In the midday sun, shoe shine boy. Watch this. According to 2 Thessalonians, and I want the third chapter, I want the second chapter. Watch this. I'm going to start at the 8th verse. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 8 says, And then shall the wicked be revealed. And then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. 19th chapter of Revelation. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. This is the second coming of Christ. He came already. He came already. He died on that cross. This is the second coming. Not the rapture. Not the rapture. This is the second coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. With all power and signs and lines and wonders. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth. That they might be saved. But God, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart. But my that just was confession, Mike. That's not what saved you. What was saved me, God? Because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Come on. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> And pastor in the head, all y'all will come to the front of the church. Now repeat after pastor, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that he raised Christ Jesus from the dead, from the dead you're going to be saved. And you walked off believing that foolishness. Wow. If I'm lying, tell me I'm lying. If I'm lying, tell me I'm lying. I'm not talking to children. I'm talking to grown church folks. If I'm lying, say, Pastor Mike, you're lying. It gotta be at least, I, it gotta be at least good four, five hundred of y'all on here. If I'm lying, tell me I'm lying. Repeat after me. If you confess with your mouth, I confess with my mouth. Romans 10 and 9 and 8, 9 and 10, all that foolishness. Wow. But you receive not the love of the truth. That's what was going to save you. Seen. But you talk about the shoe shine boy like a dog. I have had the mic always saying it, bad the mic always, because I already know you being played, baby. Say, bro, I already know they're messing you up. 
Not them, not the pastor, not the bishop, not the apostle, none of them. None of them. I'm not talking to them. I'm talking to y'all. If I'm lying, tell me I'm lying. It's not that what you stood in front of that church. It's not that while everybody's eyes was closing and you raised your hand and you said, if I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that he raised Christ Jesus from the dead, I'm saved. Tell me I'm lying. You believe that. You said it, and you believe that. And then you run out the door, thinking you saved. <sighs> every last one of y'all, every last one of y'all, should go to your pastor and ask him, say, bro, why you told me that? Ask him. Call him. Why you told me that? Why you pastors been lying and telling us this is the Romans' road to salvation? Why y'all tell us that? Where y'all get that foolishness from? Because according to what's going on, Paul is quoting Deuteronomy. Paul is quoting Isaiah. Paul is quoting and talking about heathens. Why y'all telling us that, pastor? Why? I guarantee you, not one of them can answer that. Not one. Well, look at all the people who died. Look at all the people running around now who don't even listen to this lie. Believe that they saved. Ask them. Ask your friends. Ask these good church folks. Did you confess with your mouth? Did you believe in your heart? You saved, huh? They're going to say, yeah. <laughs> Just walk off. Pray for them. Just pray for them. Just pray for them. People, you know what that's like? That's like us in our 50s and 40s and 30s. That's like us going back 30 years ago and try to teach that to these kids now today. You gonna get a teacher from 30 years ago and sit in these classrooms today, probably lose their mind. These children on some other stuff. The teaching, I, let me say, you know why, you know why I say this? My middle child, my daughter, my middle daughter, right? My mother worked at charity just about all her life. She retired from charity hospital. My mother knew the medical field inside and out. My daughter is a nurse. My mother and my daughter go at it sometimes and my daughter I always hear my daughter tell my mother well grand it's not like that no more we don't use that no more that we don't that that's that's outdated the same thing in the church the same thing in the church they ain't gotta pump that thing on your arm give me your finger put that little thing on your finger take your blood pressure they ain't got to be sticking nothing all in your mouth and all in them get some of them blood. They ain't got to do the stuff they did then. Today they don't have to do that. Why? Because of modern technology. When they came up, when them jokers 40, 50 years ago was reading the Bible, they didn't have Google. They didn't have Siri. They didn't have all these smartphones and I. They didn't have all of that. They had a limited resource but had the main resource, which was the Holy Spirit. But they rather listen to another man. They rather listen to daddy. Daddy was a pastor, I'ma listen to my daddy. Grandpa was a pastor, I'ma listen to my grandfather. But well, what about the Holy Spirit? What about the Holy Spirit? In that 119 division of songs, God is putting him on top of game all throughout. This is why he gave him eight for every letter of the Hebrew alphabet. 22 Hebrew alphabets and he gave him eight verses for each letter. So 
So my daughter be saying, but daddy, grandma, grandma, grandma got a note. I know, babe. I know. That's where grandma act though. That's how she learned. That's how she know. The medical field then changed tremendously. So what they was doing in the 60s, in the 70s, in the 80s, different ball game. Different ball game. So from the early 90s all the way up to 2020, y'all still with that same church foolishness? Y'all still with all that old begging? Y'all still with all that old pimping? Y'all still with all that old playing? Say, bro, that stuff outdated. Gone. See that new generation coming up? They don't want to hear that foolishness. They don't want to hear that foolishness. Y'all, y'all faking with all that shandana. Then, boy, be quiet. Don't say nothing. Boy, you can't ask nobody nothing. That's how we grew up. That's how we grew up. If you ain't got nothing good to say, don't say nothing. That's how we grew up. But yet it was good to me. Why I can't say it was good to me? But it's good to me, so I'm going to say it. Well, if you ain't got nothing good to say, don't say it. Okay, it's good to me. May not be good to you, but it's good to me. And I'm going to say it. Well, you can't ask no question. That's why we don't know nothing. We can't ask nobody nothing. But these generations, this generation today, they're going to say it was on their mind. This generation today, they're going to ask. You know why? Pat the mic. You know what? I always thought something was wrong. Pat the mic, you know what? Pat the mic, you know. Now what? All that old faking in the church. You know why? See, great great grandmother, she come out of slavery. So she taught her child what she learned in slavery. So her child taught their children what they learned in slavery. So when it got to our generation, when it got to our generation, Man, we ain't about to be cleaning nobody's toilets. Man, we ain't about to be doing all, we ain't about to be ironing nobody's clothes. We're not about to be doing none of that. No, mama, I got them. No, no, no. You know how I know that? Because when I was getting in trouble at the age of 12 and 13, my grandma, my mother dropped me off by my grandmother. My grandma said, okay, I'm going to take you to work with me. And I went to work with my grandmother, and she was cleaning the white folks' house over there on Ursuline, almost to the bayou, round up in that area. I'll never forget that. And I'm like, who won't do this? So our generation came with the strongest entrepreneurship it ever was. Our generation. Our generation. See the generation after us? Them little jokers lost their mind. They lost their mind. Why? Because we gave them how we felt it should be. Not how it was given to us. Because values and morals and principles and all of the word of God and church that was given to us. They made us go to church. They made, but we ain't about to make our children go to church. We done switched the whole game up. So now our children have to deal with their grandparents, which is our children, which is our parents, in this whole different ball game. Like my child said, but dad's not like that. I see what she's talking about. Once again, you done stood in the church and you done confessed with your mouth and believed in your heart because that's what a man told you. That leads unto salvation. You got to understand the difference between the righteousness and the death, the burial, and the resurrection. That did not save you. But because pastor, with that slavery mentality, by what is, say, bro, Paul say, study to show thyself approved. Paul say, study. Lord, you're over here turning these pages, huh? Whoa, right there, right there, right there. <laughs> Of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the suburban of the hearers, study to show that self-approval unto God, a workman that need not to be shamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Why? Because the word of God is a lamp and a... Oh, la, la, la. Turn your book. <laughs> I love it. 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 <laughs> Go, how you know I was? How you know I was going? How you know? I can stand right here and talk about it. And he going to turn it wherever I'm at. Let me see your pastor do that. Let me see your bishop do that. And you paying for that jibby jibby jab. Shoe shine boy. You do the work so well. 
So much to learn, so much to discover. That's what they say in the song. Boy, don't change, just keep moving. Don't stop. So much to learn, so much to discover. But shun profane and van babbling. But shun profane and van babbling, for they will increase unto the ungodliness. It will increase unto ungodliness. That's why I don't get into that jibby jibby jab. That's why I don't make all that noise. Because all that will do is increase unto ungodliness. But as he say, study to show thyself approved unto God. Study to show thyself approved unto God. I, I, I remember when I was a minister, right? I called a pastor once one day, right? I called him a Saturday. He didn't answer the phone, so I called him Sunday in church. So I said, man, I had called. He said, man, I was up all day studying. What you was studying? <laughs> what you was studying? <laughs> I thank God I don't have to do that. <laughs> God, look, what, what I'm going to preach tomorrow? <laughs> God, what, what's going to go on? <laughs> Why? Why? Because of my relationship with God. I don't need to write nothing now. I ain't got to be doing nobody. So if you call, what's up? <laughs> you all right? What's that? What's up, bro? What you need? Okay, good. I'm studying. I ain't got time to answer the phone because I'm studying. What you studying? Because what you've been studying ain't no really what well, what you were studying. What would you study? Cold gang. Cold gang. But yet watch this. But watch this this. But yet the pastor gonna play the ministers and tell the ministers, well you have to always be ready to preach. You never know when I'm gonna call you up. I never know when you're gonna call me up. But yeah, you studying during the week to preach for what you're gonna say Sunday. But yet you just gonna tell me come Sunday morning, I'm preaching Sunday. What part of the game that is? What part of the game that is? You study to preach your message, but you're going to tell me I need to be ready for when you, if you just decide to tell me to preach Sunday morning. I ain't studied. I ain't studied. I was at another church. The pastor tell me in the morning, but well, look, you, uh, I need you to preach this morning. You want to go sit in my office for what? You know, so you could get ready. I don't need to sit in your office to get ready. I don't spend time with God. I stay ready. Paul said be ready in season and out of season. I don't need to go sit in your office. Get ready for what? You want me to give a word? Because it's not you, it's God. Because you wouldn't let me do nothing. But God said, Mike, come on, baby, let's go. What you say? All right, 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 right. Run it. Right, 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 run it. God, you turning the page. What what you saying? God, you turning. Huh? Turn the page, bro. Hey! That's the what? That's the. That. I'ma wait. I'ma wait. I'ma wait. Hey, brother, wind ain't blowing like that, but I'ma wait. God. According to First Peter, boom. According to First Peter, start that verse three. First Peter one and three says, "Blessed be the Lord, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy has begotten us again." Until a lively hope by the resurrection has begotten us again. Until a lively hope, until a lively hope, until a lively hope, until living by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance of corruptible and undefiled and that faded not away, reserved in heaven for you. told you they've been faking. God said, this is why you're saying. If you ever, if you ever, you wanted some straight, God, I know God, but Mike, you got to tell the people everything. I'm not bad, but I was going to get there. This, this, if you ever want to know, this how you know, right here. Not that Romans, not that Romans, not that Romans, Peter. According to his abundant mercy has begotten us again until a live hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead 
to an inheritance incorruptible, incorruptible, and undefiled, and that faded not away, faded not away, reserved in heaven for you. Reserved in heaven for you. Reserved in heaven for you. Not if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. This is reserved in heaven for you. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last times. Wherein you greatly rejoice. Though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptation. Even now you can rejoice. Even now you can rejoice. Even now you can rejoice. That the trial of your faith. That the trial of your faith. That the trial of your faith. The genuineness of your faith. Being much more precious than of gold that perish though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Christ. This ain't fair, God, how you do this. You make this too easy, man. Man, you make this too easy. But they didn't been to Bible college. They didn't spend money in seminary. They didn't went to theology. <laughs> <laughs> they need to go get their money back. <laughs> they need to go get their money back. <laughs> Come back and feed it. Oh, what you did? I, I, I picked the Bible up and I was reading it. Oh, my bad, my bad. Okay, okay, okay. You know, you got praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom have not seen you, whom having not seen. You love, in whom though you now you see him not, yet believing, you rejoice with the joyful, unspeakable, and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Why, God? Why? 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 Mike, the Bible was written by man, inspired by God. So every man and woman of God should read the word of God so they can be inspired by God. Why? Because then that way they get to know the author and the finisher of their faith. Why? Jesus is the author. Mike, he started this thing. Jesus is the one that's going to finish this thing. This is what Peter is saying. So what they told me about confess, Mike, it's bigger than that. Why? Because if you turn back, it is already done. Mercy has been given begotten us unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance of incorruptible. If you go all the way to the... Man, come here, bro. Come here, come, come here, Corinth. Come here, Corinth. Come here, Corinth. Come here, Corinth. Let me wrap this up. I, I got to go see a man by the meal. We, we, we do this all day. We going to do this all day. We do this all day. Come here, come here, come here. First, first Corinthians 41, 15, 41. That in the glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars, for one star different from another star in glory, so also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption and it is raised in incorruption. It's sown in corruption, but it is raised in incorruption. This is why God told Adam, say, brother, you touch the tree, you're going to die. Physical, spiritually, eternal. Physically, spiritually, eternal. Death. And the whole thing from day one is to conquer death. It was always to conquer death. So even though we were sown, even though we were sown and cor corruptible, he going to raise us incorruptible. Why? Because when Jesus rose from the dead, the day Jesus was resurrected, when you accept Jesus Christ as your, as your Lord and Savior, you have been resurrected. Bible, baby. Bible. Bible. Hello. Good morning. When that sky open up, when that sky open up, 
Now we go from that corruptible body to the incorruptible body. That's all the rapture is. That's all the rapture is. That's why Thessalonians tells us God himself. What you said, Thessalonians? The deep, deep path to be lying to us. What you said, Thessalonians? Come here. What you said? Thessalonians 4, 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. I wouldn't have y'all to be ignorant. First Thessalonians 4 and 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. Those who have died in Christ. That they shall that you so that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus, God, 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 also which sleep in Jesus, will God, even so them also which sleep in Jesus, will God, even so them also which sleep in Jesus, God will bring with him. Jesus, sleep in Jesus, will God bring with him? Will God bring with him? So when Jesus coming to get us? So when Jesus coming to get us? <laughs> the Bible says he's seated at the right hand of the Father, right? Okay. So Jesus, if you're seated at the right hand of the Father, right? But yet you coming, your second coming is when you come to destroy this place, right? Okay. But we done sat in church all these years, and they say you coming back to get us. Okay. But the Bible say the dead in Christ shall rise first. But Paul said, look at that, on. I'm not going to have y'all in the room, put y'all on top of game. Even the people with no hope, I'm going to put them on top of game first. Those who which have died in Christ will God bring with him. So he going to raise up the dead first. Okay. Then those who are alive and still remain, then they will be caught up and meet him in the air. But God, in the church they said we're going to be resurrected. When? <laughs> when? When you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Because Jesus said, I'm the resurrection. I'm the truth. I'm the way. So, when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have been resurrected. But though you still live, you yet dead. Dead to what? You dead to the physicalness of sin. You dead to the habit and the control of sin. Why? Because it's no longer you. It's Christ that lives in you. So how in the world you gonna be compared with a non-believer? A non-believer is doing what non-believers do. But as sons and daughters of God, back to Psalms 119. Back to Psalms 119. Open my eyes that I would have understanding, God. I need to know what's going on, God. That's what the whole, the whole chapter is about. And it's the longest chapter in the Bible. Psalms 119. Had a lady. Rosin, I believe her name, on YouTube. She said, Pastor Mike, I love how you break that Bible down. You break that Bible down to the smallest, smallest. Even a child can understand it. Because I would not have you to be ignorant. There's no way in the world I could stand here and say, God gave it to me to give to you. This is why I didn't ask pastor, I didn't ask the bishop, I asked you all. Didn't you stand in front of that church and say, I confess with my mouth, 
and I believe in my heart that he raised Christ and I'm saved. You believe that. And you believe that you were saved. That can't save you. That didn't save you. Because they did not receive the truth, the love of truth that was saved them. What is the love of truth? So, I say if I'm lying, Pastor Mike, you lying. I didn't stand in front of the church and say that. All you Christian folks did that. <laughs> because all them Christian pastors told you to say that. Because that's what they were taught to tell you. Because they believed that because somebody didn't have a full understanding, told them to say that. And they didn't research it. They didn't study it. So just, they just said it. They just kept repeating and repeating what somebody told them. But the Bible said, don't add to his word. Don't take away from his word. The Bible said, if you say anything he didn't say, he going to prove you to be a liar. The Bible said, in all thy getting, get understanding. The Bible says, trust in the Lord. With all thy heart, lean not to thy own understanding. That's just like in the all I getting, get understanding because you're not leaning to your own understanding. Acknowledge God. Acknowledge Him in all your ways. Acknowledge Him in all your ways. Acknowledge Him, not pastor, not pastor. Acknowledge Him in all your ways and He shall direct your path. And he shall direct your path. I can't direct your path. Only God can direct your path. Boom! It's going to be a good week. We're going in. People, read that 119 division of song. And read it. Watch, watch how God open your eyes. Watch how God open your eyes. Every day, the enemy is trying to set a trap for you. But with the word of God as the lamp, with the word of God as the light, he would never be able to do it. If our God be able, so it be. If our God is able, he will deliver us. And if he don't, we ain't about to bow down to you, Babylon. <laughs> we not about to bow down to you, Babylon. Let me get up out of here. Come on, come on, come on, John. <clears throat> and Peter. Okay, Peter, you then. But beloved, be not ignorant of that one, be not ignorant of this one thing. That one day with the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person are you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hastening to the coming day of God, where the heavens being on fire should be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we according to his promise look for a new heaven and a new earth where indwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that we look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless, and account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul. Also, according to the wisdom given unto him, has written unto you in all of his letters, speaking of them of these things, which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned, unstable, wrestle as they do the other scriptures unto their own destruction. You therefore be loved. See, you know these things. <coughs> Yet therefore be loved. See, you know these things. Before be well, lest you also be led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. But grow in grace and the wisdom and the knowledge of our Lord save Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever and ever. Amen.
people all this week we're gonna work that 119 division of sun I can't say it enough read it I don't mind being a shoe shine boy There's nothing wrong with that I'm a shoe shine boy I know one thing this is for the preparation of the gospel of peace so that no matter what stands before you you're able to stand and you're able to advance you're able to advance through all the adversaries through all the heartaches through all the disappointments through all the letdowns through all the you'll be able to advance because you have been prepared with the gospel of peace because of what you have on your feet Boom. Jesus said this is an example this is how you treat people don't act like you're better than nobody. So Jesus washed their feet. Then he put them on top of game. I know who I've chosen. Mike, I ain't choose everybody. Everybody not for me. I know mine. But that the scriptures may be fulfilled. That's the only reason why he around. That's the only reason why she around. So that the scriptures may be fulfilled. He said, but when I take that, if I sop the bread and I give it to him to eat, that's the one. They didn't know who Judas was to after he gave him. He gave the enemy what the enemy needed. And what was that? To be exposed. So here you go to bread, eat it. After he ate the bread, the Bible say, after, after, after he did that, Satan, not with a little S, but Satan with a big S, got into Judas. I got the spirit of this sermon. I know they want. How you know? How you know? How you know? Because while they was talking to you, they put on the greatest game it ever was. But the minute they left you, Satan got in there. That's why they went around there and did what they did. Oh, but when I was talking, okay, that's when they was talking to you. Satan hadn't gotten into them then. This is why the light of the word the light the light is the word the lamp is the word this is why the word of god is so important because the word of god will always expose who the enemy really is peter with his little six slicks out say john bro Ask him who you talking about. Man, you you and Jesus, y'all like that. Y'all, you. Hey, John. Jesus, who are you talking about? He's the one. When I take the bread and dip it in that sop and I give it to him, that's going to be the one. That's going to be the one. That's going to be the one. But they still didn't peep game because it was after he did that when Satan got into him. You know, when some people leave out of church, hell get back in them. <laughs> <laughs> See that you be not deceived. See that you be not deceived. See that you be not deceived. In the 12th chapter, that same dude Judas got married with Mary because of the alabaster oil. So she took a she took a most expensive oil it was, and she poured the oil on and she cleaned Jesus' feet. She was a shoe shine girl with this oil. Most, but Mary had money. She was all right. She wasn't tripping. But y'all running around, y'all pouring oil all around y'all house, and y'all anointing all the car handles and all the door handles. Just how just all it. Then y'all pouring all all over the church. Ever just all everywhere. No, she was anointing him for his burial with the oil. <laughs> And the same Judas in the 13th chapter was hating in the 12th chapter. But Jesus seen his heart. Jesus seen his heart. But then when we get in the 13th chapter, Jesus already knowing game. Now the scriptures got to be fulfilled. It shall bruise your head. But you're going to bruise his heel. So now the heels of him is being lifted up. Bible, baby. It's all Bible. <laughs> It's all five. I ain't get up off this now. I gotta go see a man by the mule. Got the mic gotta come up. Shoe shine boy. <laughs>